Hey yo, it is a beautiful Sunday. I just wanted to hop on here real quick. Just kind of uh, heading to do some errands, pick up a Valentine's Day gift for the wife and wanted to give a quick update, maybe a more long form uh, video on the week. I post quite a bit of shorts if you've been watching. Uh, if you don't know, my name is Nate Muse um, and I am looking forward to providing as much kind of unique, broad uh, content as I possibly can along with a little bit of technical analysis and uh, fun stories and stuff like that if you happen to catch the Bitcoin Day uh, short video recently. Now, as I said, I do want to cover kind of the week, what I've covered so far on the week in a short form, uh, YouTube short format, as well as maybe a couple of updates that I've not touched on. So just kind of jumping in, I've talked a lot about, you know, the SEC this week versus XRP and that whole situation with Gary Gensler and uh, certain people within the sector of government that either do or do not agree with Gary or support or do not support Gary Gensler. Um, I personally think that he's been after uh, crypto as a whole for quite a while uh, my own opinion here but I do believe that the banks big banks are looking at crypto as a threat personally I think that uh, crypto is a threat to the financial system in a sense right so with that you're gonna have certain sectors of government that are gonna do everything they can to um, if not shut down but re maybe regulate certain situations right so we've got the whole kraken situation kraken exchange one of the largest uh cri crypto dexes exchanges in the uh world right so with kraken doing a lot of good in a lot of areas there's one area that the sec did not quite agree with and that's just their staking program um, again i think it kind of comes back to if you follow the money and look at where certain people are either benefiting or not benefiting you're going to really see the truth in certain scenarios um, so if you're looking at big banks right and they're offering certain levels of interest that aren't anywhere near the 20 percent uh, apy that Kraken was offering, along with a bunch of other exchanges that maybe weren't backed by enough liquidity in case the money was pulled out by uh, investors, right? And that's where you get the whole FTX situation where uh, it wasn't truly as backed as they had said. There's Voyager, right? Same exact situation, Voyager Dig Digital where uh, they got caught up essentially borrowing way more money than what they were able to back in terms of their liquidity back to customers. And that's a problem. So when you're offering interest in scenarios like that, uh, well, how are you gonna do that when you don't have the backing is the way the government looks at it, which I, I, I agree with, right? But to only an extent. Uh, crypto is created to not be a regulatory uh, exchange or uh, form of currency in any way, shape or form. And so uh, people that truly believe in Bitcoin, crypto as a whole, do believe that regula regulation is not necessarily the best way to go. Uh, but maybe putting in place certain policies the SEC sees, and that's kind of what their uh, goal was, I believe, with trying to get Kraken to uh, register with them, uh, making it sound like it was super easy and that all they had to do is go online. Kraken knew how to register, others know how to register. It's just a form on our website. They can come in, talk to our talented people and disclosure review team. Now, there's a lot more to it, uh, in my opinion. They're essentially being fined that $30 million that they settled, Kraken did, $30 million they're paying to the SEC to settle for their staking situation, as well as shutting down the program as a whole. Um, I don't think that's where it's going to necessarily stop, so we'll kind of follow that and see what other exchanges, what other uh, projects are being held accountable in their in their own way. So. Speaking of being held accountable though, Gary Gensler, um, SEC isn't fully on his side. As I mentioned at the beginning, we would touch on that. Uh, there's certain sectors of government, even the House, right? They put him on notice stating that he's gonna be held accountable. He's been kind of on a tirade, um, you know, going after certain companies that did deserve it, right? So FTX, they're gonna look into some of his detailings in that situation with Sam Bankman Freed and FTX and Alameda Research, Research and kind of what their correspondence looked like. Uh, when the SEC was looking into him, right? And so when I say he was on a tirade, no, I, I agree with the whole FTX thing and uh, with everybody losing their funds, $9 billion in total as far as investor funds, uh, you know, someone has to be held accountable. And so that's kind of the gray area with crypto uh, as a whole is, you know, there's no backing. There's no FDIC, uh, federal government insurance on your money that's being held because, well, it's not in a bank, right? And so that's kind of the risk you, you take when you invest in crypto however you got to get a cold store wallet wallet uh, what's a wallet I'm not sure but yeah you want to get a cold storage wallet uh, there's treasure wallets is what they're called um, I will 
put the names in the description if you guys care to look down there. Uh, Trezor, there's Ledger, and there's a few others. Uh, Elipal, E-L-L-I-P-A-L, -L -L Elipal, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but uh, they also have a pretty solid wallet as well, which makes it ex extremely easy to store your uh, crypto. You've probably heard of not your crypto, not your keys. Uh, so just briefly touching on that, if you haven't, your keys are what allow you to essentially fully secure your crypto, right? Look at it as a bank. Bank's holding your money. Um, you can go up there, you can access it pretty much at any time unless you withdraw over $10,000, right? And then there's uh, certain things that you gotta do there. But anyways, neither here nor there. With a crypto wallet, it's an unhackable way to store your money. The only way that your crypto would ever go away, right? Almost like if your money was in your house, stored in your mattress, in a house fire, right? So if you had a house fire or someone robbed you and stole your keys, right? Your keys are what's gonna allow you to get into your wallet and it's gonna be the only way that someone can truly access the wallet. Um, so those keys are a sequence of names, uh, not names, sequence of words that only you have, right? And so that's what's truly securing crypto for you if you hold crypto, unlike other, you know, they call them hot wallets, um, where you can store your money on the exchange you purchase the crypto from. Uh, definitely don't recommend doing that. If you absolutely cannot get a cold storage wallet, then at least use, you know, Trust Wallet or MetaMask, uh, but even that is, is still fairly risky. So uh, definitely store your crypto at your own risk and just make sure that you're keeping it in a place that, you know, you can access it and no one else should the exchange decide they want to go ahead and maybe pull your funds or uh, send your funds to a different exchange, right? Voyager, Binance, not calling anybody out, but definitely am. So anyways, it is Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, I didn't have a whole lot of time to sit down and make a video where I normally would make a video. So I'll do these videos from time to time if you guys like them. And just lastly, I wanna give a quick update on Bitcoin actually. Um, the market is looking pretty good. I would say there's definitely a lot of traps going on in terms of uh, Bitcoin bulls and bears that are trying to move the market up and down, create fear and get a lot of people to sell off. Personally, I think that should happen. I think we should see a uh, 10K, potentially 15K, but likely more 10K um, in the months to come before we see a significant um, upside. I, I do think that uh, just based on recent history, I would say, you know, it's hard to say for sure what's gonna happen because there's a lot of things that have never happened before, but I will confidently say that back in 2019 in April, there was actually what's called as a, a golden cross that we've never seen before in terms of uh, the last couple of years, right? That's the last time that it happened was April of 2019. And now why that's significant and why I am still bullish on Bitcoin for the long term and for the fairly short term is the, that last time that happened, immediately following that there was a 638 percent breakout to the upside for bitcoin um and so i'll kind of show a couple of shots here showing that and displaying that but when you think about that and how history repeats itself in crypto all the time we probably will see a quick downside here down to 10k um just being that you know you've got a couple of up down up down up down abc trends that are going on that i think need to happen in order for us to hit that upside of closer to 26 to 30k and beyond so uh let us know what you think appreciate all you guys watching if you could go ahead and like and subscribe have an awesome day